Welcome to a new Team CGC 9.8 video. So today I wanted to talk about six CGC 9.8 comic books that stand out. And you know what I mean by sort of standing out is these 9.8s, they really kind of factually stand out when you compare them to other 9.8s sort of within their era. So it's not just like my opinion that these books stand out, like we'll, we'll get into some kind of good facts when we uh, get into the analysis here. And you know, comic books that stand out, it's just another way of saying like these comic books are really special. And I think special things, they tend to be really great investments over time. So um, you know, if you're a really serious kind of 9.8 collector or you know, maybe you're just getting into things but you want to know some um, of what some of the, the most rare 9.8 comics are, this will be a really good list. So yeah, get into a short list here of six CDC 9.8 comic books that stand out. All right, first one on the list. It's an Uncanny X-Men number 120. Yeah, this is a really rare X-Men book in the CGC 9.8. So uh, you get the uh, first cameo of Alpha Flight in this one. It's kind of like the first appearance of a Vindicator who's uh, uh, like he kind of we weapon Alpha becomes Vindicator who's the leader of uh, Alpha Flight. But uh, as I said, such a rare book in the CGC 9.8. So on the census, there's a 78 CGC 9.8s in the blue label. So for how big of a key issue this is, that is just not a lot at all. Like, I mean, Wolverine fans love this one. Alpha Flight fans love this one. So to have only 78 of them in the 9.8 is, is just so rare. Uh, but even better, the 9.8 ratio is 4.4%. Yeah, so of all graded copies, only 4.4% of them are CGC 9.8s. And that's just extremely low and rare for a book like this, like a 1979 book just getting into the 80s here. Still extremely rare with that 4.4% CGC 9.8 ratio. And I've said in the past, like the ratio kind of correlates to price. Like the more rare they are, the lower the ratio is, the higher the prices get. And uh, Go Collect has Uncanny X-Men 120 at $2,800 right now. So yeah, certainly a really expensive one. You may want to check out some RAWs. Certainly, you know, this is just a great key issue, but uh, kind of fun to do the 9.8 analysis. Uh, this is one I don't have to, but um, so, you know, I, I remember an auction coming along about a year ago, and um, I'm pretty sure that ended right around sort of 2,600 in the CGC 9.8. Um, and I think, you know, the market's kind of moved along now. So, you know, if you really want this one, you're serious about your 9.8s, this is a great one to get. And I think anything under $3,000 in kind of a new case looking really good is worth it. Yeah, fair price for this one. You know, we're really investment grade books on this list, so they're expensive. But uh, if you're serious X-Men fan and serious about your 9.8s, this is one to go after for sure. Just one of the most rare X-Men books out there. Uncanny X-Men 120, one to consider for sure. All right, next one, st sticking to the X-Men theme. Uncanny X-Men 129. Yeah, this one's another really rare one. With uh, It's a first appearance of Kitty Pride, uh, first Emma Frost, first uh, Sebastian Shaw. So you got a couple first villains in there too. And uh, yeah, like I'm pretty sure Kitty Pride. there's like some rumblings or rumors, I don't know exactly, but um, that she might be in the new Marvel MCU uh, X-Men. Uh, so, that's maybe one thing to consider, but we'll have a look on X-Men 129. Regardless of that, it's always been a really rare 9.8. So uh, 283 CGC 9.8s out there, and the 9.8 ratio, it's 8.8%. So yeah, and I always say kind of single digits, it's always super rare, anything in the single digit 9.8 ratio. So of all graded copies, 8.8% of them are CGC 9.8s. So, um, you know, starting off with the two X-Men books, I think X-Men 120 is like top of the tier, top of the line, really expensive. X-Men 129 is like right below that. It's um, still really expensive with that single digit 9.8 ratio. Um, so doing some price research on eBay, there were a few completed listings for this one. I saw one sell it's a, for a $1,475. Uh, that was kind of the lower end of the range, to be honest. Saw another one sell for 1750 just in the last little bit. And maybe that's because of the Kitty Pride rumors are coming out. I'm not too sure. Maybe this one's heating up a little bit more. But this has always been a rare one in the 9.8. Um, and yeah, as I said, these are kind of one, two, um, the most rare 
Uncanny X-Men books in the CGC 9.8 in this sort of John Byrne, Terry Austin era. So yeah, these are two books I don't have. I got uh, Uncanny X-Men 121 in the 9.8 and I got Days of Future Past, uh, uh, Uncanny X-Men 140 and 141 in the 9.8. Those are a little bit less rare in the 9.8 and a little more affordable. Uh, so these ones are just, yeah, again, really serious. If you're serious about your X-Men, these are the two to consider in the 9.8. All right, next one on the list here, jumping around in eras a bit, but we'll talk about Guardians of the Galaxy number one from 2008. Yeah, this is the first new team Guardians of the Galaxy that we're sort of uh, familiar with from the MCU movies. And uh, you know, with this one, it's the origin of the new team Guardians of the Galaxy. That's what my Overstreet price guide says. Um, but um, I sort of uh, liken this to it's the first full appearance of new team Guardians of the Galaxy because there's a Annihilation Conquest number six that uh, predates this book by a month. Uh, that's sort of the first new team Guardians of the Galaxy, but a lot of people sort of join in this one, plus it's the origin. Uh, but another reason we'll talk about this one too is because in the 9.8, this one's a lot more rare than the Annihilation Conquest book. So uh, we'll have a look on the census. 168 CGC 9.8s in the blue label for Guardians of the Galaxy number one from 2008. Yeah, just the best 9.8 to grab if you're a big new team Guardians of the Galaxy fan like me. I think this is the best 9.8 to grab for sure. Uh, and why it sort of stands out is this uh, 9.8 ratio. Yeah, 23.4% of all graded copies are CGC 9.8s. And we're in a different era here in the modern era. So that is a really low, nice rarity for a modern CGC 9.8. You gotta kind of compare them to other, you know, really expensive kind of modern CGC 9.8s. And sort of when you do that, like an NYX number three, that's right around a 40% CGC 9.8 ratio. So the lower the better on these ratios. So 40%, not as rare as 23.4. That book being about $800 to $900 in the 9.8, not as rare as this one. So this is why this one really stands out and certainly deserves to be on a standout list. Um, Ultimate Fall 4, first Miles Morales in the 9.8. That one's about a 32% CGC 9.8 ratio. Really rare for a modern 9.8, but not as rare as this still. So yeah, this one really does stand out for sort of modern first print CGC 9.8 books, I think. And uh, so uh, prices for uh, Guardians of the Galaxy number one from 2008. I think right now it's, it's pretty tough to get this one under 300. Um, you know, so I'm going to say, you know, right around 300 is a fair value. Um, you know, I grabbed mine about, you know, eight months ago, let's call it. And one was 160 and one was kind of 190. And sort of the fair market value around then was kind of 175. And I mentioned on some videos, like it's a really good time to buy sort of the lull right now um, in between Guardians of the Galaxy movies because when the third movie comes along I doubt the fair market value of this one will be 175 and certainly the market's done really good here and this one I, it's really hard to get it under 200 I don't think that's doable anymore uh, most people on the team saying around 300 that they're kind of grabbing it for right now in the 9.8 white pages but 300 bucks for a class leading CGC 9.8 rarity, I think is a good deal. Yeah, so this is one to consider, one that stands out if you're serious about your 9.8s and your big Guardians of the Galaxy fan like me, certainly. All right, next one this is a neat one to go over here. It's a Batman number 428. And uh, I had did an Instagram post on this uh, book and uh, because there's a new DC animation actually of a movie of a, a death in the family, which kind of looked cool. So I posted this on Instagram, but I revisited sort of the census details and I was sort of, you know, I had I bought this one a real long time ago, like when I first got into the 9.8s, two, three years ago. Uh, so I was a little bit more of a noob then. And I think revisiting the census information, I was like, wow, this is a really rare Batman book for its era. And uh, yeah, so you got the death of Jason Todd. This is kind of the biggest key from the death in the family storyline. But uh, the, uh, on the census for in the 9.8, 162 CGC 9.8s in the blue label out there. So not too many, yeah, just a one of 162. That's not a lot of them. But 11.4% uh, is the CGC 9.8 ratio. And for a late 80s Batman book, I'm not aware of any lower than that. And even when you compare, like, a book much older than this book is Batman 357, first Jason Todd. So this is the death of Jason Todd. The first Jason Todd in Batman 357 in the 9.8 is a pretty rare 9.8, but 
but it's not as low as 11.4, I, I don't think. I'm pretty sure it's like 12 or 13 percent, just a little bit above uh, the 9.8 ratio, so a little bit less rare, lower the better with these ratios. So, and this is a late 80s book, so yeah, most late 80s Batman books are like 30 percent 9.8, you know, they're, they're just not very rare in the 9.8. So, a bit of an anomaly and one that definitely stands out. So yeah, you want to consider this one in the 9.8 if you're a 9.8 guy and uh, you're a big Batman fan like I am uh, with that 11.4 percent 9.8 ratio. So uh, price on this one, you know, I um, I think uh, we'll say the price here is about 300 to 350. I think is a fair value. Um, I've saw these sort of go for 275 um, in the past like year. Let's call it. Uh, I think with the market coming along though, a little bit over three is fair for this. And um, there was actually, um, I, I, when I did some of the research yesterday actually for the video, there was a newsstand version of this in the CGC 9.8 on the internet. I think it was like for $400 or best offer or something like that. So that could be one to consider. Hopefully it's still on there. <laughs> um, but. Uh, you know what, for sort of a Batman CGC 9.8 for this era, this is really class leading. Like it's more rare than 9.8 than Batman 423. It's more rare than Batman 404. It's more rare than Batman 357, Batman 366. Like so many Batman books are not as rare as this one in the 9.8. So I think right around 300 is a, a really good price. And if you're serious about your 9.8s, it's one to want for sure uh, uh, as a Batman fan. Batman 428. And yeah, maybe, um, you know, you can uh, possibly grab one before that DC animation Death in the Family movie comes out, which I think is coming out in the fall, so probably in a month or two. Um, yeah, you might want to be careful. Hopefully, you know, you might see people trying to post some of these around $600 because there's a new DC animation movie. But yeah, but still uh, one that stands out because it is more rare in the 9.8. Yeah, Batman 428, one to consider. Next one here. It's a Spawn number one, black and white. Yeah, this is uh, from 1997, the more rare version of Spawn number one in the CGC 9.8 has become such a collected book for Spawn fans and for pretty good reason. I think, you know, Spawn number one, 1997, uh, it was a basically a really, really low print reprint of Spawn number one in the black and white with the cool kind of black cover by McFarlane and uh, was really kind of collectible right off the bat. But uh, Certainly in the 9.8, it being low printed, it makes it even more rare. So let's have a look on the census and we'll get some context. Um, so 82 CGC 9.8s out there uh, in the blue label. So under 100 still of this one out there. And uh, the 9.8 ratio is 15.8%. So of all graded copies, 15.8% of them are CGC 9.8s. So uh, did a little research on like the print run for this one. And most blogs sort of have it around like 4,000 to 5,000, I think is kind of a conservative estimate, I guess. Some people say it's a bit lower uh, for Spawn 1 Black and White. It was kind of like a one per store. So with only four to 5,000 out there, um, when you think about you know spawn number one, uh, the normal sort of spawn number one, apparently like 1.6 million of those sold or were printed basically, um, and then you know the new stand variant of spawn number one is a kind of a one of 100 variant, so that would put the new stand variant at, um, if my math is correct, about 15,000. Uh, uh, printed of the new stand spawn number one and that's a book I've recommended in the past so with this one around 5,000 it's even less printed than spawn number one new stand and the price sort of shows that so um yeah uh, if you look on go collect right now because I wasn't seeing any completed listings on eBay actually uh, go collect in a blue label for 9.8 has this one at $1,500 so certainly it's a really you know spawn fans really collect this one and you know for me I sort of tend to go for spawn number one newsstand in the 9.8. This one being really expensive already, spawn number one newsstand's like 450 to 500, I think is a good deal on that in the 9.8. Um, you know, certainly people are focusing on the lower print, um, you know, aspect of this book. I, you know, tend to think that, you know, yeah, it's a reprint of spawn number one, but it's not the first appearance of spawn. Like it's comes out in 1997, so it's not really first appearance. 
Um, and I tend to think maybe it's a little bit overvalued, but I did want to cover it on this one because it does stand out because it's a low printed spawn item. Like basically everything of spawn was really high printed because it was so popular in the 90s. So it still does stand out. Uh, really quick, another one to consider too is Malibu Sun 13 in the CGC 9.8. I've covered that on past videos, so I just wanted to do spawn number one black and white, but they're pretty much analogous. Uh, one thing though, um, if you're serious about the 9.8s, Malibu Sun 13 is more rare in the CGC 9.8. It has like a 9% 9.8 ratio, like it's single digits, so lower the better. So a little more rare for Malibu Sun 13. One to consider uh, sort of side by side with spawn number one, black and white possibly. And if you're on a little bit more of a budget, spawn number one newsstand CGC 9.8 is, I have one of those and that's kind of the one that I really like and kind of my sweet spot with uh, my budget and everything, I think. Okay, uh, last book on the list here of six CGC 9.8s that stand out. Yeah, definitely one that stands out and pretty obvious one, so kept it toward the end. <laughs> Maybe Spider-Man 300. Yeah, origin and first full appearance of Venom. And you get the classic Todd McFarlane cover, homaged a million times, yeah. So many things to like about this book and a lot to even like when you look on the census for sure. So uh, on the census, there's a 1,024 CGC 9.8s out there. This being like one of the popu most popular 1980s books, you're gonna get that sort of almost 1,000 CGC 9.8s regardless of uh, the rarity of the book because uh, yeah when you look at the CGC 9.8 ratio for a late 80s book it's a 5.7 percent so of all graded copies only 5.7 percent of them are CGC 9.8s and I think in the blue label like there's like 17,000 of these that have been graded so just gives you an idea of how popular this book is um, but for late 80s book, there's just no real other CGC 9.8 ratio that gets this low, 5.7%, except like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, which in the 9.8 apparently it's like, I think one went for like $60,000 or something like that. So out of the price range, <laughs> but so this one, it, it's just a no brainer a CGC 9.8 that stands out for me. And I've always mentioned pretty much if you're serious about 9.8s, this is like the 1980s CGC 9.8 to buy. Uh, we'll have a look at price here because, uh, yeah, uh, taking a look on uh, some of the completed listings on eBay, uh, saw most selling, f uh, I think two pretty much sold for 2450 So, you know, I think that's um, coming along a little bit in the last few months here from what I was sort of used to this book going for. Um, you know, I've recommended this book on the channel for the last year, and I think you know some people on the team have mentioned to me that they grabbed it for like 1,750, and you know I thought that was a really good price, sort of six months to a year ago, I guess. Um, yeah, I grabbed this one, which is a really nice one in a new case, just looking so good. The color's really good too. Um, this one was 1,980 plus 20 dollars shipping. Yeah, so it was basically 2,000 bucks. And uh, yeah, lucky enough with this one too showing off a bit i guess but i do have two of them because yeah pr you know pretty much right from the beginning doing a little research this is one of the most rare 80s books and i'm a big venom fan so it just makes sense to you know if i'm lucky enough to to be able to grab two of them um yeah so i'm amazing spider-man right now though that price uh 2450 a couple of them have went we saw a newsstand version of amazing spider-man 300 we documented that on our pricing video that one went for like 4,500, I think it was. Um, so the new stand is just even more rare in the 9.8. If you're even more serious, you can possibly consider that. But yeah, again, it's, um, you know, it's almost, I think, you know, Amazing Spider-Man 300 and the CGC 9.8, I think is almost one of the most sure things that you can invest in in any pretty much comic book realm out there. I think uh, it's, you know, class leading rarity for a late 80s book, origin first appearance of Venom, all this null hype and everything, like that just all goes back to Amazing Spider-Man 300, you know, big first appearance of Venom and everything. So, uh, lots to love about Amazing Spider-Man 300 and, you know, can't recommend it enough on a, on a list that of CGC 9.8 comic books that stand out. And uh, yeah, so that's the full list of six there, and I guess seven if you count Malibu Sun 13, where you kind of went over there with the Spawn 1 black and white. So top picks here, first top pick, Amazing Spider-Man 300. Yeah, absolutely, just covered it, but um, it really is a 1980s book that sticks out in the CGC 9.8. It's really expensive, you know, you gotta be serious about, 
your 9.8s, but um, yeah, again, you kind of got the facts on your side, plus that big first appearance origin of Venom. And, uh, you know, certainly, yeah, I've always said, like, Donny Cates, Ryan Stegman just doing so good with the new Venom series. That's just, you know, setting this book, book up really well for the long term, I think. Homaged a million times. Like, yeah, just so many things to love. About Amazing Spider-Man 300. Uh, second top pick here is a Batman 428. Yeah, revisiting this one on the census makes me want another one, to be honest. Like, it, yeah, just so rare for Batman books. I've sort of said on the channel where, like, almost the lowest 9.8 ratio you're going to get in a Batman book is, like, 15%, 14%. Um, yeah, like Batman the Dark Knight Returns, it's sort of in that sort of high teens range. Uh, Batman 357, mid to high teens. So, and Batman 423, another rare one, but still mid to high teens. Whereas Batman 428, 11.4%. That is pretty much class leading for the era. And it's not as expensive as some of the other keys in the era. So yeah, if you can get that one closer to 300. I kind of want another one actually. Yeah, Batman 428. And that, I mentioned that one, the newsstand one that was on eBay. If that had good shipping to Canada, I probably would have purchased it because yeah, I was really feeling like I wanted it and um, it's a best offer. So I bet I could have got a decent deal, but the shipping was like 80 or $90, making you pay for all the tariffs for Canadians uh, right up front kind of thing. So one I had to avoid, unfortunately. Okay, uh, third topic uh, is uh, X-Men 120 and 129. If you're a big X-Men fan and you're serious about your 9.8s, those are the two books to kind of focus on um you know the ones that i went after are more like i love days of future past that's just a nostalgia thing i think but um if you're just really serious about burn era x-men cdc 9.8s x-men number 120 and x-men number 129 are just the two 9.8s that are the most rare and the, the ones to get so all right uh yeah you know what i think um yeah right now doing a sort of list of yeah, some CGC 9.8 comic books that stand out. It, you know, when you're trying to identify some investment grade books, it's good to have the facts on your side. So yeah, all this isn't my opinion. It's really, basically all these books have really, really low CGC 9.8 ratios when you compare them to other keys that are a lot more expensive and things like that. So yeah, I, I think it a, a good way to go about sort of identifying some CDC 9.8s is to look at those facts and then you know you look at the prices and then you can do some comparisons like we've done in the video but this is just if you're serious about your 9.8s as I said in the beginning of the video or if you're a beginner and you want to identify some really you know good investment grade 9.8 books this is a really good list to start with so yeah thank you very much for watching today um if you haven't already i would invite you to join the team and subscribe to team cgc 9.8 and hit the bell for all the latest notifications add me on instagram and twitter as well so yeah really good i think feel like lately we've been doing probably a lot of uh like affordable videos and stuff like that so good to just really identify a short list of you know some of the better 9.8s within their era for sure and not everything's on this list but you know some good ones to consider if you're serious about your 9.8s for sure so thanks again for watching really appreciate all the support message me on instagram if uh yeah you had anything that you wanted to ask me or talk about uh probably the easiest way to get a hold of me is uh to message me on instagram thanks again for watching today and i'll uh, see you on the next one